We can't understand why so many prominent YouTubers just quit in a world where you can get rich and famous by making the oddest, funniest, or simply awful videos. It seemed like for the longest time, all you needed was a camera and a good hook. But when big YouTubers start to quit, you begin to wonder why. Let's find out. Here are a few you might recognize. First up is Joji Miller, Filthy Frank. His character Filthy Frank had 6.661 million subscribers and was best known for the iconic Harlem Shake. He made the Harlem Shake a viral meme. He was the anti-vlogger, and it was a one-of-a-kind YouTube narrative that audiences loved. After suffering from a neurological issue that caused him to have seizures, he eventually chose to leave his channel and pursue a career as a rapper. People were concerned about him in 2018 because he stopped uploading videos completely. George, which is his real name, later confirmed the story on Twitter, saying he was leaving the channel to pursue his music career. He indicated that doing the Filthy Frank show was not what he wanted to accomplish with his life, and that he was no longer interested in it as he was also dealing with health concerns, which which contributed to his decision to leave. He left the channel and uploaded his debut video, a remix of STFU to the 88 Rising channel. So technically, he hasn't quit YouTube, but he has switched from one channel to another. Next, we have Lucas Cruikshank, Fred. Lucas is well known for creating Fred Figglehorn and being the first person to reach 1 million YouTube followers. He created episodes as Fred, a hyperactive teen with rage issues coping with screwed up parents and a messed up existence for the last 7.8 years. He chose to leave Fred and sold his channel to kids who later quit as well, sending his popularity down to rock bottom. While the channel's content was appealing to children, Fred's past is quite gloomy. His mother is an alcoholic and drug addict, and his father, whom he has never met, is on death row. He was seen in the movie Fred the Movie, which was released in 2010, and it featured John Cena as Fred's fictitious father. Fred's role was slightly toned down for the film, which got mixed reviews, mostly bad ones. Because the Fred channel remained one of the most popular on YouTube, an attempt was made to rebranded in 2014. New videos with kid-friendly content were uploaded without Fred himself. However, the channel was shut down in 2015 after this bizarre experiment failed. And now for Daniel Howell. Daniel Howell, a British YouTuber, talked about the reaction he got from YouTube during the COVID-19 pandemic and how it affected his mental health. Two years after uploading his coming out video during Pride Month, the former BBC radio presenter has produced a new video titled Why I Quit YouTube. He detailed his road to becoming a YouTuber YouTuber, as well as the popularity and fame he's gained as an internet star in the video. Later in the video, he discussed how he was affected mentally and emotionally by YouTube's lack of communication. Dan felt burned out after releasing his coming out video, and he wanted to tackle bigger projects to try something fresh and intriguing. Up next, we have Smosh, Anthony Padilla. Smosh had one of the most popular channels, with over 24 million subscribers on its own, and 43.8 million with all of their channels combined. Anthony Padilla, the lead singer of Smosh was very well known. So after 12 years, when Anthony decided to depart, it caused their channel to shake up to the point to where they no longer produced good videos. After 12-ish years, a massive age of wholesomeness came to an abrupt end. When Anthony Padilla, the Comedy Channel's co-founder, announced his departure, it came as a shock to loyal Smosh viewers. Padilla was not just a key figure in the channel's success, which, by the way, had produced more than 11 billion YouTube video views, but he was also a performer that was loved dearly by all. He felt he was no longer creatively excited after 11 years of collaboration with his friend and Smosh co-creator Ian Hecox. Padilla remarked in an interview that it was simply him getting excited about the content he was producing, but eventually his creative juices stopped flowing. Padilla also wanted to break away from comedy, which is his most well-known format. Through his videos, he wanted to help people with mental health conditions, something he knew all too well because he suffered from anxiety too. Padilla and Hecox disclosed in a video announcing his resignation that Padilla's choice to leave was something they had talked about for a while, and that there was no bad blood between them. He currently has his own YouTube channel, which has an incredible following of over 2.6 million subscribers, and he's also pursuing a career as an actor. And now, it's Zoe Sugg, Zoella. Zoe Sugg was known for her channel, Zoella, which grew to 11.6 million subscribers in over a decade, making her the queen of YouTube in the United Kingdom and the country's largest beauty YouTuber. Sugg, like most online celebrities, has experienced public criticism and and outrage for some of her behavior. She was caught vlogging while driving in December 2014, and her $70 advent calendar was panned in November 2017 due to its poor quality and expensive price. Fans were mad to discover that all it contained was a couple of stickers. We all remember she also called herself an author for a book she didn't write. She was also called out in the same month for resurfaced social media posts from 2009 to 2012, in which she made homophobic, fatphobic, and classist remarks in the post. She later 
apologized for those, but it was too late. After a hiatus, instead of continuing her old channel with 12 million subscribers, she eventually quit it without telling anyone and switched onto a smaller channel with only 4.85 million subscribers. Next up is Casey Neistat, Daily Vlogging. Casey was best known for his daily vlogging, which he did in a unique way unlike anyone else. Yep, he documented his life every single day. He evolved from being an ordinary amateur vlogger to a professional magical vlogger by making everyday vlogs that impressed even large budget movie crews. He eventually decided to stop daily vlogging in 2016, startling fans all over the globe before returning in 2017 and eventually leaving his birthplace of New York City after 18 years. In his podcast with Steve-O, he discussed how the daily vlog was negatively impacting his personal life and marriage. Neistat claimed he was only worrying about how his content should be, what it needs to look like on YouTube, rather than genuinely living life. He also said he doesn't like fame as much as he used to, and making videos was attracting that, so he felt it was time to quit. Now, we have Bart Baker, Parodies. Bart Baker was the king of parodies, parodying numerous well-known performers' songs. Singers from every era of music, from the past to the present, there was a parody for everything, and audiences loved it. After acquiring a reputation in China that was on par with Justin Bieber, he eventually quit YouTube on September 6, 2019, after hitting 10.1 million subscribers to pursue a career as a Chinese music artist instead. Finally, let's discuss YouTube's downfall. YouTube was launched on the premise of establishing a user-generated video platform, but it was piracy that propelled the site to its heights. Movie companies, television conglomerates, and record labels were fuming because it was far too easy to watch anything on YouTube without paying for it. YouTube had to alter under Google's control. As a result, it became a platform that promoted the type of material that its founders intended for the platform, original videos. YouTube became a haven for creators like Jenna Marbles, Felix PewDiePie Gelberg, Anthony Padilla, Ian Hecox, and their channel Smosh, as well as Lily Singh. They were earning in six figures and dropping out of school or their day jobs to focus on the platform. But it wasn't long before things went sour. YouTube revealed in October 2012 that its algorithm had changed to favor videos with longer watch periods over those with larger view numbers. Creators began to have issues with the platform, their content not getting monetized due to the platform's strict guidelines, and it wasn't long before their viewership began to decline. Looking back, we feel the final nail in the coffin was Logan Paul's video in Japan's Suicide Forest. The backlash from it forced YouTube into drastically changing their algorithm and quietly sidelining content creators. The backlash from it forced YouTube into drastically changing their algorithm and quietly sidelining content creators because they couldn't keep up with filtering all the content being generated. In this time period, many huge YouTube personalities shifted to Instagram and TikTok. While YouTube's changing algorithm may not be the reason behind all of them quitting, it did push a majority to the brink. That's a wrap for this video. Which of your favorite YouTubers quit over the years? Do you think the platform isn't viable for creators anymore? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.